So we will meet other distributions in uh, in the follow in the in the in the weeks to come. For the moment, let's 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 stop with just going through the catalog. Um, what I would like to do um, is a brief excurs on how to determine random numbers from probability distributions. Yeah. Um, usually, if you have a number generator, the output is uniformly distributed. If you have a dice, a number generator generates numbers between 1 and 6, it generates uniformly distributed results. Every number is equally likely. Okay? Um, but there are instances where we are not interested in random numbers that are distributed uniformly. Yeah? If we are, then we can take a dice and just scale it up and down. Okay? Multiply it with some numbers and scale it and get random numbers between arbitrary ranges and arbitrary sizes. Um, but sometimes we need something that's differently distributed. And I will show you two ways how to do this. Let's, define, let's say we have some random number P, which is uniformly um, um, distributed. Standard. And it gives us numbers between 0 and 1. If you switch on your computer, there is a, in Linux, there's a, there's a command run, I think, even, that gives us these numbers, for example. Every computer package has one. Excel, whatever. Yeah, Word. I think even Word has one. Um, so that means, uniformly distributed, the probability distribution can be described as the probability is 1 in the range um, between 0 and 1, and zero otherwise, okay? It's a normalized so that the integral, that the integral from minus to plus infinity over PR um, is one, which is basically the same as taking the integral over this, over the, the first row here from zero to one, because it's zero otherwise anyways. Okay, so that's our uniform distribution. Now let's say we are not interested in numbers between 0 and 1, but in numbers between minus 1 and plus 1. Okay? But we need uniform distribution. Yeah? Then, we know uniform distribution means between minus 1 and 1, the probability is 1 half. Because the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 half is 1. Okay? So if we now would like to compute x, so we want to have random x's that are between minus 1 and 1, but what we have is only numbers r that are between 0 and 1. Then we can, what the relation between x and r is, x can be computed at 2 times r minus 1. Yeah, so that's basically... This is x minus and 1. We are looking for for this. And what we can do is we can multiply this by 2 and shift it by 1 to the left. Then we map this range to this range. Okay, and that's here the transformation is 2r minus 1. Just coordinate transform, basically. Um, yeah, so that's simple linear transformation. And so that means I can use this range for any uniform distribution I'm interested in. Okay? Now, now we are looking, um, and if we generalize this, yeah, so that means we need to find a general relation to get x from our standard normally distributed, uh, from our uniformly distributed r. And starting with this relationship, namely that 
between a certain interval dx, yeah, the probabilities, the integral from here to here needs to be the same as in the integral um, PR dr. So conservation of probability. Otherwise, the full integral will not be um, unity. Yeah? Starting from this, we can take the um, integral yeah? always from minus infinity to r over pr dr and here from minus infinity to x over px dx. And if we put in the definition of our uniform distribution, then we get here this integral. On the right hand side, this is general. And this integral is r. So we find r is defined as the integral at uh, the, the CDF over px dx. Now, if we are little, we, but we know r, we are interested in x for what x what x, for what, which x value of x, is this is true for a given r. So you need to invert the equation so um, to find your um, r. In a, let's do an example here. Let's say this is what we are interested in. And um, We are looking for a random number distributed like this. Here again on the bottom, this is what we just derived earlier. This. Now we put in px, so that's, uh, that should be an x here. Um, we do the integral from minus 1, because that's the lowest integral, um, integer, um, integral limit. And that's the result. Now r equals this expression, and this now we have to um, simplify this to have x and on one side and r on the other side. I chose this example because for this equation this is possible. You can do this numerically. This is a, since this, this is a um, polynomial of order three. There are three solutions, yeah, and these are. Two of those are complex, so we ignore them. And the first one here is our transformation function for to compute a random x from a given random value r. Yeah, and the result will look uh, I don't have it here. And the and the x's will be distributed according to our wanted distribution. Okay. This is called transformation method. Um, the problem is, in general, you cannot do this analytically. There are very few cases where, analyti where an analytic solution can be found for this equation. So you can do this numerically, of course. Yeah, 